this question reads what or determine whether or not each of the following signals is periodic and our signal is uh, this one and if the signal is periodic determine its fundamental period so this is our equation our first task is to split our first task is to consider this this as equation x of 1 of t and this as x of 2 of t so we deal with x1 of t first and we express it the way we normally express equation in terms of a um, angular frequency and what we then see is that uh, our angular frequency omega of omega 1 is equals to the coefficient of t which is 2 pi over 3 that is what we equate at this stage and since we can be able to put to to, de to determine the angular frequency of our signal we make a conclusion there that our equation is or our first function of t is periodic because any function that has angular frequency is periodic so from that we can now be able to determine the period of that uh, function of t and we know that uh, the, the period is always defined as the 2 pi times the reciprocal of the angular frequency so it is 2 pi over omega 1 and since we know what our omega 1 is we can always be able to express it uh, evaluate that because it's 2 pi or 2 pi uh, 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 3 this becomes uh, uh, 2 pi times 3 over 2 pi which becomes 3 seconds so we evaluate the second uh, function of time which was x2 of t and we say that uh, we are able again to uh, to point out or to pick the angular frequency as being a coefficient of time which is pi over 8 and therefore we, uh, we have just seen that pi over 8 is equal to omega 2 and see again we make that fun conclusion that that function is periodic Having said that, therefore, we can be able to determine the period by saying that uh, the period is 2 pi times the reciprocal of, uh, of omega. And therefore, what we find is that our second period is uh, 16. Now, to determine the periodicity of x of t, now, which is a function, which is a fun sum of two functions, x1 and x of t, or, uh, x2 of t, what we, we do need to do is to apply uh, the condition that says that uh, the ratio of period 1 and that of period 2 expressed as such should always give you a rational number. A rational number is our, our, our condition. A rational number means that it's a number that can be expressed as a fraction of two whole numbers. So there are no decimals here. If there are going to be two whole numbers, then we say that uh, that condition is met and that number is a rational number so in that case we say that uh, indeed 3 over 16 is a rational number it doesn't have any fractions when you when you let it remain as a fraction you're not dividing it so that they are just remaining a fraction of two numbers two whole numbers that defines a rational number so while having said that there we say that uh, our function is periodic if this if the one number was giving us a value that is cannot be expressed as a function of whole or two whole numbers then our function would have been said to be not periodic but since it is a rational number then our function is of t is periodic and therefore our period is actually going to be uh, the the greatest common factor of these two numbers which is simply obtained by the smallest the, the, the smallest factor that is common to both is uh, the one that we obtain as follows but it is very simple we, we just do something like this express uh, t1 as a function of t2 we are going to find t1 so we, we do cross multiply we find times 16 is equals to uh, t2 times 3 
and that is going to give us uh, this number is going to be equal to this one that that is our uh, test common factor and we know our t1 was uh, 3 and therefore when you multiply 3 times 16 you get 48 that is how we obtain this value and that is the period so we have determined that our fraction x1 of t uh, expressed here is periodic and number two its period is 48 seconds so when you draw this function it will be repeating itself every 48 seconds